Hello and welcome to Women's Therapy Center. Today we will talk about vaginismus and dating. We know a lot of you are struggling with the concept of is it possible to even date with vaginismus? Do I even bother? Is it a waste of time? Will I be dismissed? Will I be ridiculed? Would I be mocked at? Would I be looked upon as crazy? So there are a lot of details that come up when it has to do with vaginismus and dating. Let's review a few of them in a bit more depth. Do I disclose the vaginismus to a potential partner? Well, the quick answer is that certainly there is no need to rush to it in the first minute you meet. Hey, hello, I'm Susie and I have vaginismus. There is no need for that. You don't even know where this relationship will go. But feel confident enough within yourself to know that if the relationship develops to anything meaningful, according to what you define as meaningful, then you will have to have a conversation Yes, also about safe sex when you get to it, of course. But also about, hey, I have vaginismus. No, it's not a deadly disease. No, it's not contagious. Yes, let me explain that to you so we can move on from here. So if you present it in a positive way, in all likelihood, the partner will not leave. Of course, if the partner is only into sex and using your vagina, and if your vagina does not work at the moment, they have no interest in you, well, you may want to evaluate the scope of this potential relationship anyway, right? Another aspect of it is, what if you fool around and fingering comes up and you say, no, 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 you cannot do that. And after the partner goes, and you go through the whole thing, well, my finger is clean and I'm fine. My nails are not broken and or long or potentially um, could scratch you. Why are we not okay with fingering? And that is when you have to stand very firm and very self-assured and say, look, my vagina is not friendly. I have a condition called vaginismus. Hopefully you can tell him you're seeking help for it. Uh, but tell him that I hope soon we will be able to do that. So if you present it positively, it should fly positively. How do you tell partner you do not want to have intercourse, as in you cannot have intercourse? How long can you even stretch the excuse of I'm saving myself for marriage? Sometimes it works, yes, of course. But in many situations it's not. It does not bode with the rest of who you are and how you presented yourself along the way. So how can you duck intercourse? Yes, you can say, I'm waiting until the relationship will be more meaningful and you, I know you're the one. All those uh, stalling tactics that could be utilized here. Unless, of course, you believe in that, but that's okay. It comes a time when those excuses have come to fruition and then what? Then again, here is where you have to stay positive and firm and explain, as we've mentioned before, me and my vagina are not friends. Vaginismus is the name of it. I'm seeking help for it. It's not contagious. Let's find alternative means until I can be an owner of a vagina that fully functions. With all that, do you date or would you only date those who are unsuitable for intimate sexual relationship? We have seen those patients, the dated partners who were not available or not interested in sexual intimacy. Well, that is your choice. Depends what you want out of the relationship and the dating, of course. But if you're looking for a balanced relationship, balanced intimate relationship, then being intimate is definitely a part of it. And then you have to really reflect, am I compromising what I really want because of my vaginismus or because I cannot speak up about it? Do I choose a safe potential partner because they never want intercourse or will never have intercourse or any sexual engagement with me? This is how you have to look at it. Why am I choosing such a partner? Is it an escape or is it truly because I do not want anything more than that either? 
food for thought for you. Another question. How do you overcome the shame about vaginismus when you're sexually intimate? Okay, so say you don't have penetrative sex at the moment, or even you don't even have fingering, but the clitoris is north of the vagina, and you could definitely engage in non-penetrative sexual activities if you so choose. But vaginismus may make you feel ashamed and inadequate. And on guard with having to come up with excuses. Does it really? Think for a minute. It's still the same overall you. It's just your vagina that is not friendly with you, or you are not friendly with it. But the rest of you is still the same you. So why be ashamed unless the vaginismus stress has filtered into all facets of your life and if that's the case, we urge you to quickly take a look at that and quickly seek the necessary help for that, professional help, counseling, intervention, treatment, so you will not be in this predicament for long. We don't want you to settle for something that could be fixed. Now, what if you disclosed about your vaginismus and the partner feels weird about that? or the partner does not understand, or the partner gives you an attitude that is quite negative, or even leaves? Well, the answer really has to do with, not vaginismus, but rather with your self-worth. Are you worthy of a partner who reacts like this before any conversation, explanation, exploration of options, weighing the rest of the relationship against the current limitation of vaginismus. This is where the decision will be. Is this the right potential partner for you or not? But if you're being dismissed on the spot, oh, well then, okay, I don't know what it is. Oh yeah, I had a girlfriend with that. Oh no, that's not what I want. You know what, maybe we're not for each other. Okay, it was a pleasure knowing you. <clears throat> Goodbye, I'm out of here. If that's what it is, we hope you also say that person was not worthy of my time. In another note, it is deeply embedded with vaginismus is how do I reconcile religious or and or cultural pressure to date, to marry, when I'm so hesitant about the vaginismus in the first place? How do I even tell my parents in those situations when the parents are involved with your um, decisions to marry and produce children, whereas you are stuck with that vaginismus that you may not even have disclosed to them. This is a heavy one. This needs a bit more guidance. This needs a bit more help. You may not be able to sort it out yourself. You, as is, feel quite inadequate about your vaginismus and not to explain to your parents and then maybe to your religious leaders and maybe to the culture. Navigate the best you can. Seek help for yourself. Seek support. Talk to a counselor. Talk to a religious leader. They, I am sure that they have encountered vaginismus. Hopefully they can help you navigate this unfortunate blunder of all these pressures so you could get the help you need, sort your vaginismus without being pressured into uncomfortable or embarrassing situations while you still have your vaginismus. Be your own advocate. Do the best you can. So to round up this um, quick video, could you date with vaginismus? Should you date despite your vaginismus? Is dating okay, even if I have vaginismus? But now you know that it's perfectly fine as long as you believe in you and you value yourself and you are your own advocate and you take care of sorting out your vaginismus, of presenting it in the most positive way 
to a potential partner or to a partner already and um, not let it sway you from living life as full as you can. Good luck. Let us know if you have any questions and uh, reach out to us if we could be of any help to you.